Welcome, everyone. Beautiful to see you all here. Yeah, I'm so happy to have Neta Boyne with me here today. She just arrived in Mexico a few days ago and is going to be staying here in Mexico for a few weeks with us while she shoots um, a music video for one of her new songs. And for those of you who don't know Neta, she, um, yeah, she's a beautiful singer songwriter and these songs have just poured through her from the spirit in a very given effortless way. And um, we had a, a gorgeous concert at La Casa de Milagros last night where Neta just shared her songs and the parables of how they all came through. And uh, she was sharing about how a few years ago, she just felt this pull towards the piano, actually. And uh, something, there was a force in her that was just bringing her to sit at the piano. And on the piano, A Course in Miracles was open. And it was open on one of the workbook lessons. And she just started to hear a melody and chords. And within half an hour, this beautiful, complete song came through from the spirit with lyrics from this lesson. And every day for the next two weeks, this happened. Um, she would sit at the keyboard and, and just hear the music and write it down. It was like she was channeling directly from Jesus. And within about two weeks time, she had 14 or 15 songs. And uh, yeah, just this, like this complete album that was sitting there ready to, um, ready to be used for healing for herself and I feel like Jesus wanted and still does want to use her in a very deep way to um for other people to to hear this music and and have it deeply touch them the way it's touched Netta and I think for for a while the songs sat there they you know the songs came through and it was like that was the first step of you accepting your calling actually accepting your function um, to have the, this music come through. And, um, and then there was this pivotal moment on the, the Voice for Holland where she was on stage actually um, as one of the finalists in the Voice for Holland. And in that moment, something within her knew that there was something more. Jesus wanted to use her in a much bigger way, even though in the world it would seem like succeeding or winning something like the voice of Holland would be it like that's you know that that would be huge but Netta knew that there was something that she was supposed to fulfill um, in this lifetime and in that moment made a decision I'm going to go home and I'm going to record those songs and I'm going to make them into an album and the last two years has been that journey and been that process and um yeah, it was beautiful because Ned and I were just talking before the show and I had this page with all these questions I was going to ask Netta. And uh, when we were talking before the show started, it was just feeling like actually that wasn't the direction for this show, that something else was coming through, actually some more healing for Netta and um, just felt in order to be... A, yeah, we can't just talk about things for the sake of talking about it. It's like what's really real and present. So, yeah, I'm just thank you for being here, Netta, and just for being so open and and transparent and vulnerable. It's really an inspiration. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So whatever you feel to share, we didn't even have all that long to kind of. <laughs> talk about it before so yeah and just trusting this is the spirit's plan and whatever you feel is on your heart you know just feel free to to uh, share it yeah just so grateful to be here and hi everyone <laughs> oh um yeah so we were actually going to talk about my album and <laughs> i was gonna yeah no I already felt like, okay, there's too much coming up right now for me to just sit here happy and talk about my album. <laughs> and Because, um, yeah, I feel like I'm on the show and whatever comes up is for the show and is for everybody that's tuning in. So I'm just feeling inspired to 
to share what come what is coming up for me and um yeah so i just got my period <laughs> yay <laughs> and uh, yeah that has been a a huge healing um theme for me huh sorry let me get some water <laughs> And um, oh, I find it kind of scary to share it live <laughs> and with all of you, but I also feel so supported and I feel like it's all for healing. So I feel it's good to share. Um, Yeah. So as most of y'all know, like my mission is to just extend love and include everyone in that. And ever since I was small, I was a very always like a very loving and very sensitive child. And I had compassion for everybody except for people who had something to do with rape or something to do with any kind of that physical um, sexual abuse I could really feel so much hatred I could really say like everybody deserves my love except for them like they need to be killed they need to die and <laughs> of course like the spirit knowing what my mission was there had to come something in order for me to heal that um so <laughs> sorry I'm getting just so emotional to share it. so when I was um, 17 years old and my mother is watching there too hi mom <laughs> I was I was sitting with my mother and I actually dreamed that night I had a dream about my dad that he was just touching me right here and I was saying like, no, don't do that. I don't, I don't want to experience rape again in this life. Don't do that. And when I woke up, it was like, I didn't think anything of it. But when I shared it with, to my mom that night when we were, were watching a movie, it was like, hey mom, I had a very weird dream. And I was just sharing that dream with her. And while I was wanting to sharing it, I just broke down and, and I, I was like crying for half an hour, like so hysterically. And I just love how like spirit arranges everything because my mother was just reading a book about what happens when your children are remembering past lives and how you have to, how you can deal with that as a parent. So she was just, she just read that book. She was just reading that book. And I just had this memory of this past life where a dad of mine, or that, that, that father in that life um, physically abused me over and over. And I was, just, I was just crying hysterically for like half an hour. And my mom was like so supportive and like really just holding the space for me to allow that to come up. And from then on, I just had like nightmares every night. It, it would be as if every part of my being just remembered that and as, and as if it was this life. And it felt so intense for me. And I wasn't in the chorus back then yet. So I didn't, now I really see like why spirit opened up that part of my unconscious. Um, because eventually well, everything just came together. That year I went to India to invest child prostitution, like a lot of children that were raped. I had to interview them, like everything came together in that year. And I went to a healer who, who kind of healed like the, the, the nightmares and everything. But even still, when I would go to like these meditation workshops, the memory would still come up and I would still feel so much hate towards um, that father of, of that life. I would not be able to forgive him. So 
And I still contained this hatred towards people who raped, like there was still no compassion for them in my mind whatsoever. Um, so I did feel after a few years, okay, there's more here. And I was a little bit older then also. And the course, I think the course almost, maybe it was already in my life, but maybe right before the course came in my life, I felt like, okay, I need to take this to a deeper level. And so I went to like a regression um, therapist who like brought me back to that life. And it was only there and then that I really got the miracle from that memory and that I really saw like why this came into my mind. Because in that, in that session, I saw that I had a brother whom I loved so, so dearly, like I had so much love for him. And it was as if I was like, just projected out like 10 years later, or I don't know, like how much years, but just, there was no time, like when I was seeing, like, there was no time. It was just, I just went forward and I saw that he was doing the exact same thing as our dad was doing in that lifetime. And I could see him doing that, the thing that I would want people to be killed for, and I could still feel love for him. And that was like my whole mind when I saw that and when, when I felt that, like my whole mind was just like, like, wow, I could still feel love for him. And from then on, I felt like, oh, okay. So bit by bit, I felt like spirit was healing that belief of um, everybody deserves love except for these people. And that got healed so beautifully. And then, you know, that I also work in prison. So like the spirit just worked so gentle by like after that, like the first year um, hearing that I was going to go to a prison where like a lot of boys were that did like really brutal things with children, um, sexually uh, offen offensive, how you call it? Yeah. Well, you know what sexual I mean? Sexual offenses. Yeah, sexual offenses. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to work with them yet, but I did like meet with them. So like I was feeling very anxious at first, like, oh, how is this going to be? And then it was just so beautiful. And then the year after, that was the first time that I actually worked with that group. And I could just, by then, I felt like my mind was already unwinded so much that I could just really um, see the innocence in everyone. And I remember just like, going around in a circle and like just watching and everybody and just repeating in my mind like i love you i love you i love you and that was like wow for me to be able to feel that so and that was years ago and now i feel like really like there's no like i feel like the spirit just really healed that belief of somebody being less of deserving of my love than anybody else um but the interesting thing <laughs> this was a little <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm taking a lot of time, but it's all, it's over healing. But the interesting thing that came up recently is that I've always had like really excruciating pain around my period, like really just um, like just these really bad cramps and and that's how you see that the unwinding of, of the mind back to God. Like sometimes you think that it's already healed and then there's like another layer that you just weren't ready yet to see. But when you're ready, it comes up and you can see it. And it was with this as well that I hadn't really thought about this whole story for years because this is years ago that, that, that it all happened. And it was since um since this year i really felt like i really want to heal this th these cramps because i know there 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 is a different way and i know like it's all coming from my own mind so why why do i want this pain like why 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 is this here and i really felt dedicated to to find a, a solution for it and of course uh the first thing i did was going into the forum so i like went to the doctors and i did like all of these different therapies and different solutions that he would offer me and none of it would work actually and it was like three months ago when I was um I was just having my period and again it was like so painful and I was just crying and I was just like praying to Jesus like just please show me why do I want this pain 
show me like i want to i want to see i want to see what this, what this is what 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 is underneath this pain and all of a sudden this um this whole memory came back up again and i i could feel so much guilt towards myself of you you caused this like that that guilt of of that life of that girl feeling <laughs> feeling responsible for that abuse. I'm feeling like it was all my fault. And that there was so much guilt coming up with that. And really, I could see for the first time how badly I wanted to be at pain how badly I needed the pain. I so badly wanted to punish myself for that. And yeah, that was the first time that I could actually see that. Like, wow, I actually want to be punished. I actually want to be at pain. And yeah, so that's the first time that I'd actually became conscious because like you, you read it in the course that you, like you, but do this unto yourself. And, but like, that's like such a weird idea. Like everybody would say like, who would want pain? I don't want to have pain. And I could, for the first time I could see, yes, I want to have pain. And even looking forward to the pain that it's like, Oh, like almost like that, that whole torturing the, the, the martyr martyring or how do you say that? That, just that release of, oh, okay, I punished myself again. Okay, now I'm good again for a little bit. This guilt is taken out upon my body. Now we can go on a little bit more. So yeah, I've, I've just been dealing with that a lot. And then these, these two months after that, I felt like my period was so soft and so, so just really relaxed. And I was like, wow. And then only today... There was so much pain. There was so much pain again. And <laughs> feeling guilty over the pain. Feeling like, oh, I'm, you see, I'm a bad student. I'm a bad course student. I'm in pain again. And um, yeah, then it just, I asked Susanna for an aspirin. And that felt so loving. And I could feel my ego judging that. You know, feeling like, oh, there you go. Like, you shouldn't be using magic. You know, like, that's not good. That's not right. You're not a good person and you're using magic to solve your problems. And I could feel my cramps are gone now. And I was just like on the couch, like, oh, so I know it's my mind, but I just really felt like sharing this to know, like, to be kind for yourself. Because I feel like it's such a process and we got to be kind for our process. And whenever you hear your mind say, you shouldn't do this or you should do this, it, 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 it's coming from your ego and the Holy Spirit never says you shouldn't do this or you should do this. It's always so sweet and gentle. And if in a moment this feels loving and this works, then it's okay to do that. And yeah, so it's just this journey what I've been on about healing and healing that unconscious guilt. And so yeah, Spirit uh, chose the day for me to be on your show. And I'm actually late. My period was supposed to, I know, like I told you, like every day, my period's supposed to come. My period's supposed to come. Jesus, I was like, when, when's it coming? <laughs> and so, <laughs> you didn't say that, but I thought in my mind you said it. Because <laughs> so, every day in the morning, I was like, my period's coming, my period's coming, my period's coming. <laughs> and um, I feel like, yeah, it just waited for this day. So I just, I couldn't, I couldn't um, pretend that this is not going on and just talk happily about my CD. Maybe we can do that now, but I had to, <laughs> I had to share this story because it's not for nothing that right on this day, my period comes in. This was there to share. So, <sighs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just, like, when you're sharing there, something feels so deep about it because every time you, you talk about your album, you know, you always share, this is for healing. That is the only purpose. And I feel like, like the spirit has the big picture. The spirit knows how to unwind the mind from that guilt. You know, that's so deep. 
we don't we don't know and it's like all connected you know you've spent the last two years just pouring your heart into this album now you're here in mexico with us making a music video then you're going to la san francisco you're going on tour you're coming to strawberry heart song and i feel like there's just this huge extension mission for you now you were saying you've spent like two years in a cave <laughs> you know creating this beautiful music um and you've gone through so much yourself like you've 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 shared like the deep healing i think you said it was the most challenging two years of your life like the easy part was the songs being downloaded you know but actually to be able to sing them from your heart in an authentic way where you really felt them so much had to be faced in the mind and and i feel like that's just continuing now it's like you said it's not an accident that this would come up today so that you could share that to release it from your mind and also for healing for everyone because when we're healed we're not healed alone so i think it's yeah just so beautiful so thank you and even with what you were saying about the aspirin <clears throat> like that judgment that comes in around something being right or wrong in form but you know, the spirit doesn't look at it that way. It all comes down to, to guidance. Because again, the spirit knows the way out. The spirit knows how to unravel us from this world. And um, so in that moment, Susanna came with the aspirin. That was the spirit saying, yes, be gentle. And you felt the peace in your heart with that. So it's like you, you know that it's given. And actually, my first question that I did want to ask you was around guidance. So you know, do you feel... Yeah. open to go into that just yeah. even how guidance played an important part in the last few years with creating this album because i know you've talked about that a lot the listening and following it was that was everything for you yeah um is there any parables yeah i don't know i think i think by now especially seeing when i saw the the cd physically i don't know you you had it here somewhere right like <laughs> it's so beautiful yeah and the artworks are made by Willem Glaudemans he's the Dutch translator of A Course in Miracles right inside here with all the lyrics and you can sing along but when I when I saw it um, that was like just a product of me just following the guidance and really stepping back and letting him lead the way like you were sharing when I was in the voice like the decision was made like okay I'm gonna make this album but right after that I said but I'm not gonna do anything because I really didn't know like where to start I had no money for it I had no like team I had no label no manager no nothing and I was like okay if you I'm, I'm accepting my part in this but you're in charge and that was the first time that I actually did that because I was always somebody that wanted to have the control of everything and have like be in the front seat and it wasn't per se that I knew like it's good to um, step back it was more because I just really didn't know where to start and now I now I know like it's just so great to really be able to step back and to trust like that whatever the yeah when, when you when you give away the control that it's always so much more beautiful than when you try to control it yourself like that's it's it's just because i saw it that i got so much more motivated to to practice that and i think that's like with a lot of course students and the course talks a lot about motivation like you have to experience the fruits of forgiveness and the fruits of following the guidance for you to really don't want to do it any other way anymore and I, i've experienced so much fruits of, of following the guidance that for for now it's like really like what do I know? Like, why would I ever want to ignore that? And I, I'll still do, but I'll know that it won't feel right. And then I'll go back to listening to the guidance. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I have so many questions I want to ask Anetta, but we just have five minutes and we have a song that we wanted to sing together. Yeah. So I'd like to do that if, if you, you feel up to it. And maybe there's sure. another show where I can ask the rest of my questions. <laughs> sure. But we'll yeah, come back next you. week <laughs> talk about the CD. <laughs> okay. With her and, oh, now I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Will I make it? <laughs>
this is it where you're when you're just like handing everything over to this girl you don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah you're good I will step back and let him lead the way For I would walk along the road to him Into his presence would I enter now Please help me to remember only love and therefore so am I I can be nothing else God is only love and therefore so am I I can be nothing else by grace I live and in my release there is no cruelty in God and more but to remember you to remember you what could I seek but my true identity God is only love and therefore so am I I can be nothing else God is only love and therefore so am I I can be can be nothing else. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.